a spiritual person lives uh, in corridors in between everything that seems to be going on in the world. You go where you're invited, where you're moved to go, and uh, nowhere else. It has nothing to do with the everyday norms. And when you're truly spiritual, it not only doesn't have anything to do with the everyday norms, you're not even here. There is a mystical sense that we're imbued with from birth that is God. And um, when you're spiritually awake, and this could happen in your early 20s mostly, um, you realize you're here for a higher purpose at 21, 27. If you're spiritual, if you're not, this is not relatable. You live transcendent of everything. Um, it's, it's in the life of Jesus or the Buddha where they left home and they're on their own. And they weren't trying to find themselves, they were trying to discover a way to reintegrate all their faculties into the world in a spiritual way so that the world no longer exists. Everything physical, everything in time is nothingness to the spiritually endowed, to those of us who are aware of God, who worship God, who care for God, and who want the best for all those in our life. We walk away from the everyday norms. We're not going to be successful, necessarily raise a family. You have a drive within you that overtakes everything you see as God sees you feel as God sees, you understand as God understands. And when you have that awakening, uh, enlightenment, nirvana, whatever you call it, you're, if you just think about a moment, it's so easy to grasp this. It's nothing way out there. When you have spiritual experiences, you, they're always talking about something so enormous and so outside of the realm of the everyday. Well, of course, Everything that God is, is endlessly more miraculous and wonderful in every sense of it, in every regard to it, in every relationship with it. It's always called, the word infinite is always used. There's an endless and beauteous light that surrounds you, that fills the air. You read all the cosmic conscious experience of all the saints uh, and seers throughout the world, through all time, and you read the religious text, you'll see it's indicating that enormity of, of expression of the universe that we call God, which is an actual human presence. The universe is a human being. It's you and it's God as one person. So when you become awake spiritually, your desire is to wake up all the rest of the sleeping populace. <laughs> not everyone, not everyone will awake because they're not really here because everything that's related to the body is what's been called the illusion. The mortal dream, whatever you want to call it, it's, there is no spiritual life within you until you have awakened the spiritual senses of everyone that you love and care for. And so you walk away from the everyday drives, have a career to be wealthy, to take care of a family even, it's you you realize this responsibility is so great and you understand there's a God and that the world is lost. So you step away and try to figure a way to reintegrate all your sensory equipment spiritually to raise the atmosphere of the entire world on their behalf. It is a selfless endeavor because God is selfless and the world is, it's a lost planet. <laughs> when you feel God, it's so enormous Again, the word infinite, all the beauty of it. And so from that, you could understand that people around you that really believe their body and their everyday drives are, are the reality of their existence. It's, it's quite tedious to be in the midst <laughs> of the mortal, okay? It's, it's quite painful for the spiritually adept. So you train yourself to communicate with people when and where you can in order to lift their atmosphere. 
I covered two areas right there, how painful it is, and, that, and then you discover ways to reintegrate yourself into the everyday society as a spiritual instrument to raise who you can and when you can. It's a very intelligent endeavor. It's very deep, profound, and it's very true. And it's why you, why I exist, why we exist. We're here to raise the whole thing, to end it all forever. And if you know that and you see that and you feel that, you'll, you'll understand why you walk away, why you're not interested in every day. Um, and if you're involved in whatever you're involved in, you stay involved in whatever you're involved in to fix it, to raise it. I'm not saying to walk away from responsibilities, but to reintegrate the spiritual sensory awareness we have of the infinite into our everyday life. We're born to end all of it forever. There's nothing easy about it, and you can't explain it to anyone. I know I can't explain to my best friends that I'm, I'm in a trance to feel so much presence of the divine all day that it's hard to be around anyone. Sometimes I go sit in my chair at home for a few hours and I just drift off and I can't explain. And you make excuses why I didn't do this or that, why I don't want to go here or there. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to be anywhere. I don't want to do anything. I'm speaking for all of us who are spiritually endowed with a love for our Creator for a desire to fulfill our mission, which is to end all the madness, all the pain, all the fear in the whole world forever. That's why you're born. Nothing else counts. We'll all be given certain tools to integrate our spiritual senses into the world to lift those that are available. And that one day, uh, We'll fold the whole thing up and it will be gone. Because again, to explain the initial point of this, there is an endless eternity and it's a presence and it's human and it's you and it's God as one presence. It's so pure. So it isn't that you don't want to raise a family or this or that, whatever you're doing, it's that you're part of eternity, always. So you find ways to incorporate the reality that people relate to it into this higher existence. When you're first illumined, being around people that are very mortally inclined is quite painful, so you have to discover ways to be around people to lift who you can and when you can. It's, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting game. So in the beginning there'll be the dark force that is this world will rise up against you in very <laughs> mean ways in the beginning until you discover how to know where and when to make your move to help someone out of the drudgery who believing they are this life and they're going to retire at 70 and they're going to do this or they're always worried about some day-to-day -day task and, and when you live beyond the world it's you're there with everyone and for everyone, for everyone in your heart truly and you experience the entire world around the clock always you're actually God's eyes and heart and soul. So you see the world as God sees it. At a certain point you wake up to this one or that one you know or there and, and you'll have a, a, a group of friends that are in the world but not here. And we acknowledge each other from time to time and, and that keeps us going. And we'll know I'll say for myself, when I was going to meet my teacher, the two months before, the teacher said, you're going to meet so-and-so, and she'll help with the work, and she'll get it all done. And, okay, and two months later, sure enough, it happens in a very mystical, beautiful way. In other words, every instant of your existence
involves a direct movement forward of God in you and through you for your work, for your mission, for your ability to spiritually lift those around you from the, from the trap of the mortal life. I'll say for myself, I was never interested in marriage and being successful, this or that. God had a way of, for all people that are, that are adept at life, you, you walk into places, I'll walk into a store, a business, a community, whatever, and I'll paint myself on the wall just by doing the right thing and being good and caring for the people around you, and all of a sudden you're making a living. It's an old-fashioned way, but it's the truth. Just give yourself to whatever's around you and lift it and lift it, and then you'll leave at the right time, you'll help, you'll... You'll make certain friendships, you'll have respect here or there, but inside yourself always this endless purity that the wise still call God is, looks out through you. Do you imagine such beauty, such wonder? I've never imagined that it's always there. Talk to people in your life or think about it on yourself when you're alone and write down on a piece of paper or whatever like, 10 deep spiritual experience you had. And all of a sudden, when you start allowing yourself to move more fully into this timeless sphere of seeing as God sees, you can call it spirituality, but it's, you'll discover yourself being eyes that know, that understand, that care. You'll be... Uh, transcendent of everything. You'll have a happiness and a joy that is literally indescribable, but it's so subtle. And your humility is so otherworldly. And people of the world, of the everyday world, are unimaginably lost to you. But you never judge them, you never slam them, you're, you're, doing, you're dying inside yourself to lift who and what, who and what, when you can, when, all day. That's all you think about, all you feel, because you're seeing that from God. And the point of this is that you will be God at a point, and you'll see the dearly departed, my, my teacher, whether, whether incarnate or out, we're always one person, one beingness. And God is one inside that, and we're one inside God and one another. And I have many, 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 can I say thousands of friends like that? And we're living outside of the physical world. So if I go home and sit down for you know, my chair, whatever, I'm just, that's an example. We all have a place where we're comfortable and peaceful, hopefully, and, and I fall instantly into this magical realm that the wise still call God. God is our father, our mother, our family, our friend, and it's a divine presence, and it's quite human and true and unimaginably humble. And God's only desire is to express that through everyone, because that's the truth of life. When we're wise, when we deepen ourselves, we'll find that. And we won't be alone. Say my family, we call the 628 Club. My uh, sisters and brother and I were always together, even though there's already been a loss and so forth. We're all, we're not lost. We're all, we always know we're always there. So I don't have to travel to here or there to be with them. They're always in my heart. I'm always in their heart. We're, it's just a very pure, not a sentiment, it's a reality. I think of my buddy Skip, he's he just moved to Fort Carson, I guess, and he's enlightened, so we're there. Uh, and I could go down the list of people that I've known in my life that uh, we have this love for each other and can't be together. I can't fix them until, uh, not that I, we all need to fix the world, to lift the world to this simplicity, this purity, this kindness. We're always aware that the world is 
what traditionally has been called an illusion, Maya in Sanskrit. <laughs> there was an illusion. It's not, in other words, the, the beauty of God is so gorgeous. So there are people that really think they're their body in this world in time or it's so gruesome. You know, you can see any animal in the animal kingdom, all the love and the affection they'll have uh, for one another in a very natural way. And I'm not talking about aggression or protecting your family and killing the other. I'm talking about the basic sensory equipment of your puppy or kitten or whatever. It's, it's we're all alive, that, that life force is what I'm talking about, except when you're spiritually imbued with this divine presence. It's so utterly pure, sensitive, and aware. But it's not weak. It is literally indescribable, the intelligence of it, the kindness of it, the strength of it. And you're one with it. And you're aware that the whole world is lost, and there's something very dark and evil behind it, but it's not a big deal to you. But uh, it's pulling the strings of most of the people we know, and we can save, as it were, <coughs> or illumine. And uh, illumined is, is the word saved in the scriptures meant to illumine, to spiritualize. To save from sin, sin was originally meant, the word, <coughs> the original meaning was um, separation from God. It's a very delicate mystical sense. So you find out where you're separate from God in whatever way and you let go of it. And you rise to the, uh, in the morning mist to this primordial beauty and purity and kindness. I use the word kindness because it's so delicate, but the senses have become this soft golden light. It's with you all the time. You always, you see it, you feel so much of this presence and it's infinitely thick and infinitely thin. No human words can convey the beauty of, like when you see a great painting, you can't explain how that happened. The, the artist gave their, their mind, their soul, their body, their beingness to discipline themselves to create the beauty that uh, the artist might see. You are a work of divine art. That's who you are. The world's been against you since your birth. You volunteered for this. And now you understand it, and you rise up through it, and you lift the hearts and souls of those you love, of those you find worthy. It'll take two or three years or a month or two to figure out how to approach this when you have your early awakenings. It might happen at 19, 17, 23, 59, it doesn't matter when you, you have that uh, experience of infinity of the true presence of God and it's different for all of us and that presence called God will be with us in elemental ways you every moment of our life say for me in 19 April 1969 after five months of being in this cosmic conscious experience around the clock and just just had a compassion for the whole world. But then I knew I had to figure, and then that began with the day when I was hairline from death, and I'm like, okay, and I didn't care about staying or, or <laughs> living or dying, and then my sister came to the hospital, and then I, then I, and then I had to live, and uh, decided to. And then it took God five months to show me that, you know, because I had tremendous spirituality. And then it was, uh, it was not understood by anyone or anything, and something happened with, and it doesn't matter what it was, but is that all this is? And, uh, and then at the end of the five months, uh, the heavens opened in a way I could expend the next 10 years explaining how the beauty and the power and the enormous atmosphere of the actual divine, which takes you through many, many, many dimensions, but they're all you, you're at one with them. And then at the end of it, it was, I met God head on. Uh, I knew that what I wanted for the world and what God wanted were the same thing. So 
I've not had a moment without that since then. I am not going anywhere. I'm not going to do anything but fulfill this mission. So record in your thought the time that you felt this and knew this, and that you can feel this now. That your desire to help, to lift, to improve, to heal, to correct. Then all the vileness of this world. I've dealt with things, I've been around things, but I, I still from the beginning, it's, it's sickening the way this world is. Even ordinary everyday interchanges are often very vile. What kind of word do you want to use? When you're used to, to that that is. This is the way you'll thank your mom, your dad, your family, by being with them in the deepest part of their soul. As I am with my sisters, my mother, my dad, we're, we're forever. And we know that. Can you imagine that? I know that with so many friends. My buddy Kim Black and, and Angelina, we're, we're, we all have the same drastic, stupid material life around us going on. But we're all there. And I could go down the list of names. We're there now. And your mission, and you know this within you, is to lift those you love. It's not just to be happy or spend the night or has nothing to do with the physical body. It's a transcendent love and kindness. And yes, we're very human. But when you step into this atmosphere, you're not interested in the everyday drudgery. The only goal you want is to lift. The hearts of all the downtrodden. I've had so many friends that I'd find in the, the supermarket where I knew the lady was messed up and I would just eventually got to communicate and let you know, how do you know me? I mean, it was just, you, I do this every day in different ways, in very delicate ways, but, and then when I have people at my home, right now we're doing it inside a huge gym here with my buddy Greg and my buddy Andre Sukumta, my teacher here, and his beautiful family, and uh, we're all, uh, you know, peas in, peas in a pod, we're all, we're all okay with life because we trust each other, love each other, we're, strong people and point being when you find a way to lift everyone and you will then you'll be with me with my teachers with my family we're even though some of us are out of body whatever we're not out of body do you understand this is civilization where we are the world is lost the world is hell it's in all the mystical spiritual texts of all the religions and all the spiritual tribal sense of it. It's all, it's the same religion. There's one religion, one God, one truth. And there's one center of it all. And it's in your heart. Wherever you are, that's the center of eternity. God's presence, your presence. Forget all the details. Involve a heart of fire. It's lit from within and without and forever. Your heart, God's heart, the heart of all the holy ones are the same heart. You'll find your mom there. You'll find your loves there. You'll find many, many friends and it's here and it's now. This is what happens after time, when time no longer is. Time is the outlaw of the universe of good. Lose that time sense in your meditation daily, and you'll see everything as it is. It's beautiful existence, consciousness, illumination, enlightenment. You will lift this whole world. It seems like a big deal, but your mission is to lift it in your life, and you will. It's not a big deal. The big deal is to remain confused 
and at the abeyance of these dark forces, and they're very dark and very evil. But the more quiet you are, the more equipped you'll be to not step into the traps. It's wondrous to, to be clear on that fact that you don't have to take part in the, in the everyday. And that's why you don't have strong material drives. You, your drives are strong enough to give you the facility to help those that you can help, when you can help, and where you can help. Can I continue? <laughs> there is a God. You are God's very light. You're part of God's heart in the world. And all the dear people you know are part of that. And you will end the very perception of there being a material world. Yet there are miracles all the time in your life every day. And they're very subtle and you're, you're, I'm being very direct with it today, which I never am. I'm, I'm there for the other person. When I'm working with people, say, where it's really private at my home, they'll come in and it'll be very natural. So heaven itself will open to them and speak with them and be with them and heal them and care for them. So you're to do this with those you find worthy, as it were. And you'll make little mistakes here and there in the beginning, and then you'll make no mistakes. And the dark side will send things at you, and you'll register it. And the whole point is to not react to it and not even let it know you know. Because it's nothingness. It does not exist here. You'll find God to be yourself, to be your soul, your mind, your body. It's quite wonderful to fall into the hands of the living God. Your God's own, your God's eyes and heart and soul, mind and beingness. You'll end all the madness of the everyday silliness by simply registering that it is nothing. You don't react to it at all. It's over. You're a good person. You're a precious soul. You're a divine ray of light. And a darkened sphere. And I don't even want to give it that much to say that. You see what's being said? This is an empowerment of teaching, so I'm trying to explain what it is, but even to use the words. To you as the individual are unnecessary, aren't they? When you hold the hand of the one you love, to see your children's eyes when they're playing. It's, there's nothing to say or think or do. It just is. The real you just is. You're here to instruct others, to lift others to this place where love just is. Isn't that wonderful? You are a great person. You're remarkable. You're invincible. You're forever. You are God's light. You never were other. You put yourself into this madness. And again, this is like one infinitesimal, smallest part of an atom. And it's infin infinitely smaller than that. When you feel God, that's what this world, this realm, these conditioned senses that people have will, will be to you. They're not they're not relevant. Read all the, the life of the spiritual experiences that, all, that you'll find in a, in a billion books or whatever, and you'll, we've all seen the same thing, we're all the same person, and we're all begging good people to toughen up. It's our own neighborhood, our own family we're fighting for. Give yourself to this cause. Everything just said is real. The world itself is a lie. You'll rediscover the depth of your own spiritual senses. In a few short months, and the dark force will be at you, and that's like a teaching that's good. It's, it can't help it, but it's good for you because you'll see that everything being said is relevant. 
and then you can let it go and just help you can help who you can help. By being the beauty that's now in your heart. And we will raise the dead, as it were. I mean this literally. Someone's sick, someone's hurt, no one's in a grave. They're all here. I've lost many and I've never lost touch with them. They're always with me. I'm always with them. Please be kind to yourself. Understand that it's not you. Anything against you is a dark force and you'll find ways to resolve psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, all the difficulties that rise in our life. And you'll live in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.